Every one of our boots at NYX starts with a high-grade piece of leather that is tanned in the United States. The first step in this process is rolling out the hide, inspecting it, looking carefully for stretch marks, bite marks. The cutter's job is to make sure that he's choosing prime material for the prime parts of the boot that are gonna take the most wear and tear. This would be the vamp, which is the portion that goes around your foot, and normally the upper. The upper is really what you can keep for the entirety of the boot's life. Once we cut the parts and pieces, we skive the edges. The skiver's role is to thin the edges, making it easier for the sewers to hold the material together and to sew it. We don't want too much stack up of material that can be very uncomfortable for the foot. So skiving increases comfort for the person wearing the boot and it also makes the boot much easier to put together for the sewers. Next, we sew the boot. There's several sewing steps in this process. We sew the uppers together we put a stitch through the back from the top to the bottom to create a back seam. We then put a back stay and pull loop on the boot. We reinforce it with four stitches. Again, this requires a lot of hand strength and a lot of control to make sure that the lines remain parallel. We then move on to sewing the tongue of the boot. This is a fully gusseted tongue. The tongue goes from the top of the boot all the way down to the instep of the boot. We move on to the sewing the heel counter and the vamp onto the boot. Again, both of these steps require a lot of concentration and a lot of hand strength to make sure that the lines remain as parallel as possible. All of our boots utilize either three rows or four rows to make sure that the boot is extremely durable. Some of our boots will either get a tag or a stamp in them. Normally the stamp is reserved for our work boots, and the tag is reserved for our heritage line. Next, we move on to the hook and eye process. For the eyelets, we use a very old machine, which both punches the hole and then sets the eyelet, and it's an auto-feed machine. And for the hooks, we simply press a pedal and we punch the hole and set the hook in place. Next, we move on to the lasting process, which is one of the most critical parts of the boot making process. For some of our heavier weight leathers, we'll actually soak the leather to soften it, making it easier for the boot maker to stretch and pull. Once the boot is soaked and ready for stretching, the boot maker will set the insole on the boot with three nails, and then he'll trim the insole, no different than peeling potatoes. Once the insole is attached to the last, the bootmaker will then take the upper, set it onto the shoe last, and then begin the wet lasting process in which they will pull and tack the leather to the insole, making sure that the foot is straight or that the upper is straight on the last. Once the leather is tacked onto the shoe last and into the insole, we'll let the boot sit so that it can cure and take shape around the last. After the leather has had an opportunity to form and cure around the shoe last, we then move in to the actual lasting process. And again, this lasting process is done entirely by hand, by skilled craftsmen and women. First, we secure the waist of the boot. That's where we're pulling the leather, tied up against the shoe last and tacking it in place. We then very methodically pinch the leather and pull it with pliers around the heel and set several boot tacks in the heel area to secure the leather underneath the heel. We then move up to the toe area of the boot. We take the tacks out of the boot from the wet lasting process. We're pulling the buckskin liner and gluing it in place. And then we're pulling the outer leather with the same lasting pliers and very methodically tacking it in place around the boot. Once the toe has been fully lasted, the boot at this point has more or less taken its final shape. The shoe last remains in the boot for the majority of the process, guaranteeing that the leather continues to form around the mold. As the boot approaches the shanking process, the boot maker will then sand the bottom of the boot flat to make sure that the shank or the fiddle will lay properly up against the insole of the boot. The boot maker will then pull the lasting tacks out of the front of the boot or the toe area and flare it out. This is necessary to complete a stitch down construction. 
The boot maker then takes a veg tan arch piece and a veg tan shank and nails them into place through the insole of the boot. The boot maker also takes a rubber squeak pad and glues it in place. This prevents noise or squeaking between two leather pieces, the midsole and the insole. After the shanking process is completed, the boot moves on to the bottoming department. Before the midsole is applied to the boot, the boot makers will ink the midsole, matching the final color of the edge of the boot. They'll then apply glue to both the boot and the midsole and they will hammer it onto place. Hammering removes air between these two layers and it also helps to activate the glue. After the midsole has been hammered into place, the boot makers then take boot tacks and they nail the midsole all the way through the insole. Many people ask, why don't I feel these nails when I put the boot on for the first time? These nails are actually like rivets. They go all the way through the midsole and the insole and they hit the metal plate on the bottom of the last and they clinch over, securing all the layers together just like a rivet would. Once the midsole has been secured through the insole of the boot, the last is then removed and the boot is taken to a McKay lock stitch machine. The McKay lock stitch is doing the same thing as the bottoming nails. We use the McKay stitch in the forefoot, not the nails, because it's very difficult to smooth out the nail heads up in the toe area of the boot. The boot maker will then glue the bottom of the midsole and the bottom of the outsole and glue the rubber outsole onto the midsole. They will then take a hammer and they will pound the outsole on, removing any air gaps and also to help activate the glue. Once the outsole has been applied, they will then trim using a five-in-one tool to get a rough perimeter in preparation for sole stitching. Once the boot is trimmed, the sole stitchers will approach our Rapid E machines and they will put two rows of stitching. These rows of stitching are going all the way through the vamp, which is the outer leather, through the midsole, and all the way through the outsole, sandwiching all these layers together, creating a traditional stitch down construction. There's no margin for error when stitching through an aggressive tread sole. It can be compared to driving on a bumpy road in the snow and ice. If the turn isn't timed properly, then you go off the edge. You may notice that some of our boot models with thicker sole stacks don't have sole stitching going all the way through the outsole. This is because the jaws of the machine are not wide enough to bite down on the sole stack. The stitching goes through the rubber slip sole only, and the outsole is glued on using an extremely durable adhesive. While sole stitching does tie the layers together, the majority of the holding strength of the sole is in the adhesive. Our glue-only outsoled boots have been reliably worn by wildland firefighters for over three decades. Once the boots have been sole stitched, they then move on to the healing department. In the healing department, we have several different heel bases that we use. These are veg tan bases that are glued together in layers. We use a gauge to set the proper setting front to back for the heel base, and then we drive healing nails through the veg tan heel base up through the midsole of the boot. Once the veg tan heel base is applied, the boot maker will then set the boot on a level surface with the rubber heel cap to make sure that the boot is properly balanced. This usually requires sanding some material off of the bottom of the veg tan heel base to make sure that the boot sits level. Once the heel is determined to be level, the boot maker will then apply glue to the bottom of the veg tan heel base and the bottom of the rubber cap and then proceed to nail the rubber cap onto the veg tan heel base. Believe it or not, glue is mostly adequate for adhering the rubber cap to the heel base. But because our customers are putting these boots through their paces, all of our boots have a nailed on rubber heel cap for extra durability. After the heel has been secured to the boot, the boot is then taken to the sanding department. Sanding is one of the riskiest parts of the process. If the sander hits the boot, the boot is more or less scrapped at this point. The sander must be 
very careful not to allow the boot to slip and to hit the sanding paper. They very carefully finesse the boot on the belt sander, making sure that A, they don't hit the sole stitching, B, that they are sanding the correct heel shape, and C, making sure that the edge of the sole is perpendicular to the ground being very careful that they're not sanding at an angle too far in or sanding at an angle too far out. After sanding, the boot then goes to the finishing department. The first step in the finishing department is to very carefully inspect the inside of the boot for any nail heads that are sticking up. This process is quite simple. We take a piece of rebar and a hammer and we hammer down the high spots or any nails that have not fully clinched. Once the nails have been pounded down flat, we then glue in a sock liner to further smooth out the insole of the boot. With the sock liner in place, we add ink to the midsole and the heel stack of the boot, and then we run the boot on the buffer to even everything out and to ensure a clean, smooth finish for the boots. Once the boots have been buffed, the finishing department does a preliminary QC process looking for any imperfections or defects in the boot. When the boots pass the preliminary QC, they then move on to final QC in which the boots are also inspected. The boots are then boxed and shipped out to you. And that's how every pair of Nick's handmade boots are made. All American materials built here in-house by skilled craftsmen and craftswomen. If you found this video enjoyable, please take a second to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next video.